One of the subjects to which countries attach the greatest importance is defense. They must always be ready in the face of internal and external threats of all kinds. Possession of a well-organized army is essential if a country is to survive. At stake is the integrity of the country. To that end, great care is taken over military training and armies are given the most up-to-date equipment. The same thing applies to human beings. Human beings also have enemies. We are unable to see them, however, and may not even be aware they exist. Yet, they are always there. In the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. In short, everywhere there is life. From the moment we are born, we are surrounded by a cunning and aggressive foe. These are germs, bacteria, fungi and viruses. They eat, reproduce, hunt and are hunted. However, an army which expertly protects against all forms of external threat is constantly on guard in our bodies, our immune system. A regulated community with more than one trillion members. The largest, best ordered and most disciplined army known in the universe. In this film, we shall get to know microorganisms and germs and witness the way our bodies fight against them. You will watch in amazement the way that friendly and hostile forces behave in an intelligent manner. You will also realize that the intelligence which prevails in this war and during each and every phase of it belongs to God, their creator. And you will also understand why it is that he creates disease. Our immune system. Get to know the mighty army within you. No matter how clean we imagine our surroundings to be, we actually share our environment with countless microorganisms. The largest of these are dust mites. These microscopic animals live around the hairs on skin. Smaller microorganisms are microscopic species which live in colonies containing millions of individuals. Human beings are surrounded by these invisible creatures. The enemy lies in wait at every moment to seize the opportunity to invade our bodies. Bacteria, single-celled organisms which multiply as soon as they find a suitable environment. Fungi, parasites which dominate humid environments. And viruses, the most dangerous invaders of whose existence we only became aware through the invention of the electron microscope. The most cunning and dangerous are the flu viruses, the smallpox virus, Ebola, polio, the AIDS virus and others.
A century ago, scientists were seeking the answer to a mystery under the primitive light microscope. Cells were destroyed at an astonishing speed by an invisible enemy. The reason for that mass death of cells was a secret to scientists at that time. Until, that was, the invention of the electron microscope by German scientists in the 1930s. In this imaging technology, electron particles began to be used instead of the light being used in ordinary microscopes. When objects were magnified 7,000 times, this extraordinary enemy could finally be seen. Viruses. Thus it was that a new dimension of life was discovered. A community formed of fascinating geometrical shapes, trillions of which live in this space the size of a full stop. For that reason, they are regarded as the smallest form of life on Earth, because they are as small as a thousandth of a millimeter. Viruses have been designed to survive even under the harshest conditions. They are able to wait in crystalline form until they encounter the cell that they will take over. They are patient. They can even wait for hundreds of years in frozen animation between life and death. They have been coded to multiply and, of course, to wreak harm as they do so. These are the detailed structures of viruses, made more intelligible with the help of modern-day computers. And the AIDS virus, in the face of which man is so powerless. Inside it is a DNA chain, carefully protected in a protein covering. The information it contains describes how new AIDS viruses are to be created in the cells it invades. Viruses invade the cells of plants, animals, and human beings and are unable to live and multiply without using their nutrients, energy, and organelles. That is because viruses lack the necessary systems to live and multiply on their own. For that reason, they invade a cell which is compatible with their needs and occupy it. That target cell then soon becomes a virus-producing factory. At the first stage, the virus very carefully identifies whether or not the cell is suitable for it. It checks the cell out thanks to special receptors. Later, it uses dissolving enzymes to open a hole in the cell membrane, through which it deposits its genetic code inside the cell. You are now watching viruses as they move into cells. The cell, unaware that anything is wrong, continues with its normal activities. It begins to copy this new DNA, imagining that it is creating the proteins it needs. Because of this clever strategy, the cell soon becomes a factory creating its own